Hello, and thank you for joining us today in our study of the book of Psalms. Today we are in Psalm 91. Now, as we examine this psalm from the background perspective, there's not really any titling for this psalm from the standpoint of who the author is, nor do we have any real frame of reference as to when this particular psalm was penned. There are many, because of that, who will simply attribute it to David. But the fact of the matter is, we don't know for sure who the writer of this psalm is. Regardless of that fact, you have in Psalm 91 a psalm that points us toward where we find refuge in times of trouble and who it is that we can count on when we need help. And so let's examine what is stated in Psalm 91. Beginning in verse 1, we read, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. As you look at Psalm 91, there's a lot of things to take, we could take time breaking down. One of the things that is so fascinating to me is the fact that in the first two verses, you have four different descriptions of the Lord and, and four different words that are used to, to give him the, the names or the references of, of who he is in the backdrop of all this. You have the idea of the Most High, uh, which is Elyon, which is being used in reference to him, that he has authority above all. You have the use of Almighty in verse 1, which is Shaddai, talking about his power and the greatness of what it is that he can do. You have the statement of the Lord that is going to be used. And then again, my God, uh, you have Yahweh and Elohim being utilized here in these two areas, talking about who God is and the reminder of his abilities and all of the things that give honor and glory to him. You have all of these things being utilized in the first two verses, and they all point us back to God. So what is it that the psalmist is trying to remind us of through this psalm? Well, you have, first of all, the statement that he is our refuge. He is, verse 2, my refuge and my fortress. He's going to say again, down in verse 9, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. God is the place to go in times of trouble. 
God is the one who will watch over you. He will take care of you. He will uh, be the one who will cover you. It will be under his wings that you will be protected. He is the place in which we put our trust. Now, again, this is seen from the standpoint of the figurative element. But there's a sense in which, yes, when we put our trust in God, nothing can hurt us, nothing can harm us. Now, that doesn't mean nothing bad is ever going to happen to us. But rather, in the eternal view of the things that are truly important, nothing can hurt us. When we put our trust in God, we are safe for all eternity. And so you have this reminder that is being given of where it is that we put our trust and what it is that we are supposed to be focused on. Because if we make God our refuge, and if we are going to do all of these things, he will take care of us. He will watch over us. You know, there's going to be a statement that's going to be made in verses 11 and 12. It says, For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. It's going to be that passage that Satan is going to quote out of its context to tempt Jesus over in Matthew chapter 4 that if he throws himself down from the pinnacle of the temple, the angels will rescue him because they won't allow him to dash his foot against a stone. But here's the problem. And here's what so many times happens with people who are trying to tempt us. They take a passage of scripture, but they take it out of context. Here, his trust is supposed to be, the, and in the context, it's supposed to be that our refuge is in God, not listening to Satan. It is supposed to be in doing what is right and putting our trust in God that he will work things out, not in giving heed to temptation and hoping that everything is still going to be okay. But when you take a verse out of its context, out of being the refuge and into something of a selfish nature, it becomes something very different. I do want you to notice something else in verses 14 and 15, and I know that we've talked about a lot already. But as you come down to verses 14 and 15, there's this sudden shift. You have this statement made in verse 14. He says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. This is a transition to being from the voice of God, that we've made God our refuge. We have been ones who have put ourselves under his wing in his care. Verses 14 and 15 is the, the giving of his response because he says, I will do this. I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is God's response. When we put our trust in him, when we fully and completely go to him as our refuge, not looking to do things ourselves or to put the power in our hands, but truly and fully putting our trust in God. God's response is, I will take care of you. I will watch over you. And I will do what is best for you. When you look at Psalm 91, the overwhelming emphasis of the psalm is the importance of utilizing and understanding that God is our refuge. And that if we are ones who truly put our hearts toward him as the place of safety, and we do his will, and we put ourselves in his service, he will take care of us. These are the things that I see in Psalm 91. I hope that they are things that are beneficial to you. Thank you for watching today. Next time we're going to come back and begin looking at Psalm 92. I hope that you'll join us then. But until then,
Have a great day.